When people become sick, they normally go to the doctor practice self-medication or in the worst cases summon a witch doctor. However, when our protagonist's sister falls sick with a deadly and incurable disease, she decides to go extreme lengths, something which has never been done before. She actually goes to Egypt, resurrects one of the dead mummies and orders it to treat her dying sister. The plan is a risky one, but it is the only hope she has. Following this, the movie cuts to a few days in the past. In Paris a middle-aged man named Chupard heading back home after a long day at work. He's drunk disheveled and in desperate need to relieve himself. With nowhere to go Chupard decides to answer nature's call in the most unconventional of places right in front of a massive statue. However, as he is about to finish a strange light emits from nearby causing him to run away in fear. The scene then cuts to the home of an eminent professor of physics Marie Joseph aka Jose. He has decades of experience in the field and many believe that he can even perform witchcraft. Jose also has extensive knowledge of ancient Egypt and at the moment, he is busy with telepathic experiments. He holds the belief that life is possible after death. Following this, we are taken to the National Museum of Natural History where a huge 136-million-year-old egg of a pterosaur is kept. Lo and behold, Jose makes use of his telepathic powers to hatch the old egg and a massive pterosaur emerges from it. It turns out the professor can control the bird's physical movements so he makes it fly through the glass ceiling. However, when he loses focus for a split second it lands on top of a passing car. This results in a deadly crash, killing all the passengers inside. Coincidentally, Chupard witnesses the incident and reports it to the police. In the report, he details how a dinosaur caused the car to fall into the river. When the general public gets to know about this, they are left in utter shock. Many of them even stop going to work, fearing that the dinosaur may attack them. Therefore the President of France orders the National Police to make the case their top priority. We are then introduced to André Zborowski a young man who spends his days working as Menard's assistant at a botanical garden. He has a deep passion for reading and is an ardent admirer of the adventurous author Adèle Blanc section. In his free time he pens letters to her hoping that he can win her heart. But despite his persistence, Adele shows no interest in his advances leaving André heartbroken and frustrated. She is currently on an adventure in Egypt to retrieve the mummy of Patmosis, a popular scholar and an advisor to the Egyptian pharaoh Ramesses II. Despite the whole operation being illegal, Adele hires two local Egyptians and manages to sneak into Patmosis' tomb. With her sharp mind she then unlocks the entrance, which was being blocked by a wall. After gaining entry into the tomb, the two men reveal their true colors. It turns out they are thieves who are after the jewels buried in the tomb. They threaten Adele and try to send her away, only to realize that they can't exit the place without her help. Therefore, the thieves agree to let her get the mummy while they keep the gold. After a while they eventually locate the coffin, which is filled with millions worth of treasure. As they start pocketing it, Adele tries to locate an alternate exit to carry the heavy coffin out of the tomb. Unfortunately, something sets the tomb's anti-theft mechanism into motion and it kills the thieves for trying to steal the jewels. Adele is stunned by the sudden turn of events, but before she can even process what happened a professor named Dayuvolt storms into the tomb with police. It's evident that the two know each other very well and Dayuvolt demands to know why she is after the mummy. Left with no choice, Adele finally reveals that she wants to seek Patmosis' help to heal her dying sister. Although the mummy is dead, she believes that it can be resurrected as mentioned in Professor Jose's book. Unsurprisingly, this only makes Dayuvolt burst into laughter and he arrogantly tells her that it's an impossible concept. He then orders the police to arrest her. Turns out they are planning to execute her without trial. Adele is given one last wish and she uses it to ask for a cigarette. However, when she is given one she shoves Dayuvolt into the mummy-making machine and sets the tomb on fire. She then quickly jumps into Patmosis' coffin and pushes it into a large well that is connected to a river from the bottom. 
Meanwhile Professor Dayuvold's henchmen rescue him just in time. At the Natural History Museum, Professor Menard notices the broken pterodactyl egg. Other staff members assume that a visitor vandalized the egg and glass ceiling. However, the theory is proven to be false when Menard notices that the shells of the egg are still connected to the amniotic membrane. This means that an internal force cracked the egg, which further means that the pterodactyl emerged from it and flew away through the glass. Soon, Inspector Caponi arrives to investigate the matter but Menard hides his findings and instead advises him to meet Professor Jose. Meanwhile, at Jose's residence he is busy feeding the giant pterodactyl when there's a sudden knock on his door. To his surprise, it's the cunning Inspector Caponi. In a state of panic, Jose hastily hides the colossal bird behind thick curtains, hoping to avoid any unwanted attention. However, Caponi invites himself in for lunch, leaving Jose with no other option but to entertain his uninvited guest. The pterodactyl suddenly becomes aggressive and attacks Caponi, before flying away. This scares the life out of the inspector and he orders his men to take the professor into custody. In the next scene, Adele brings the mummy back home from Egypt. She lives with her ailing sister, who is completely bedridden. It's then revealed that the latter ended up in this state after a long hairpin got stuck in her head. Meanwhile, Adele notices the million letters Andre has sent to her but as always, she pays them dust and goes on about her day. Later that day, Adele comes across Andre dropping yet another letter at her door. After politely getting rid of him, she notices a newspaper report about Jose's arrest and death sentence. Overwhelmed with worry, she rushes to the jail disguised as a lawyer to meet him. Jose reveals to her that he has the ability to bring creatures back to life as evidenced by the pterodactyl, but he tells her that he won't be able to help her as long as he is imprisoned. Adele, desperate to save her sister who is suffering from a hairpin lodged in her head, begs Jose to revive Patmosis, who she believes can provide the cure. However, with his current situation, Jose is unable to help. As Adele tries to figure out a plan, unfortunately her cover is blown and she is thrown out of jail. She once again arrives in a new disguise, but the outcome is the same. After many trials, she finally reaches Jose's cell, only to learn that he has been transferred out of jail and is going to be executed early in the morning. With this, Adele accepts the fact that she can't save Jose by herself so she decides to seek the president's help. It turns out she has known the president for quite a while now as she was one of the first reporters to interview him after he came into power. Adele explains the situation to him, highlighting Jose's scientific credentials and the loss France's scientific community would suffer if he is executed. After hearing her out the president promises to look into the matter. He then throws a ball and orders his pet dog to fetch it. However, the pterosaur who happens to be nearby, mistakes the ball for an egg and attacks the president. Adele watches it all go down so she quickly springs into action and saves him. Unfortunately, no one notices the giant bird and they assume that Adele attacked the president. Hence, she is arrested. In the meantime, Caponi hires a professional hunter from South Africa to catch the pterodactyl. The movie then cuts to Menard's botanical garden where Andres shows him the nest made by pterodactyl. It's then revealed that Andre used his extensive knowledge about dinosaurs to trick the giant bird into building a nest in the backyard. This blows Menard's mind and so he commends his apprentice for his intelligence. The police eventually release Adele from custody and when she returns home, she takes a bath to forget about her woes. While she's at it, she decides to read Andre's latest letter. Lo and behold it reveals that the bird lives in Menard's botanical garden. Hoping that it would lead her to Professor Jose, she rushes to Andre, gives him a kiss and then requests him to take her to the bird. After reaching there, Adele quickly befriends the pterodactyl and uses it to save Professor Jose from getting executed. They then return to the garden, as anywhere else is not safe for the giant beast. Menard is pleasantly happy to see Jose as it turns out the two professors are childhood friends. Unfortunately, the South African also arrives there and shoots the pterodactyl at point-blank range. 
This causes immeasurable pain to both the beast and Jose, as their souls appear to be connected to one another. Menard quickly snatches the gun from the hunter and shoes him away, but the damage has already been done. Hence, with time running out, Adele quickly springs into action asking Andre to keep the bird safe while she and Professor Jose rush back to her home to tend to her ailing sister. There, the professor makes a circle of antique things around himself and starts performing his magic. It seems as if he is going to succeed but halfway through, he suddenly loses power and dies. This devastates Adele and she seemingly gives up. However, her sorrow is short-lived as she soon discovers that Jose actually resuscitated Patmosis before passing away. It turns out the pharaoh's medical doctor was actually buried right next to him. A flashback then reveals that Adele's sister got injured during a tennis match between the two. During the game, Adele accidentally struck her sister on the forehead with the ball. As a result, the latter fell on her back with her head landing on her hairpin. The whole story makes Patmosis emotional and he expresses regret over not being able to help her. However, he makes a revelation that Jose's telepathic power must have resuscitated the dead within a two-kilometer radius. This gives Adele hope and she rushes to the Louvre Museum where the mummy of Ramesses II and his servants have been put on display. She takes her sister and Patmosis along with her as well. The latter helps them gain entry into the museum and when they are almost caught he puts the guards to sleep. In the next scene, Adele locates the mummies and wakes them up from deep sleep. Patmosis then explains her sister's ordeal to the pharaoh and requests that he allow his personal doctor Nosibis to cure her. However, this only infuriates the pharaoh as he thinks he's been disturbed for such a trivial affair. Just when it appears as if all hope has been lost, Adele bursts into tears and starts explaining the guilt she has been harboring for the last five years. She reveals that the hairpin which has made her sister permanently disabled was actually a gift from her. Upon hearing this, the pharaoh finally feels sorry for Adele and allows Nosibis to cure her sister. And in just a matter of seconds the latter removes the hairpin from her head. Afterwards, he makes a magic potion using entrails and uses it to cover the hole on the sister's forehead before wrapping a bandage around her head. The pharaoh then kisses the girl to conclude the procedure before leaving with his entourage. After a while, she finally wakes up much to the delight of Adele. They embrace and cry tears of joy, while Patmosis silently leaves to be with his friends. Several weeks later, Andre again shows up at Adele's door but this time with flowers. However, when he doesn't find her there, he gives them to her sister instead. This officially kickstarts their romantic relationship. Meanwhile, Adele is seen boarding a ship which is revealed to be RMS Titanic. The movie ends as the evil professor from earlier sarcastically wishes her a happy journey.